As weak hands continue to fold one after the other after the other, some analysts remain firmly bullish on Tesla. Case in point, Tom of RBC. Remember the guy who added FSD licensing to his valuation model? And I was like, what? Holy crap. Same guy. I mean, he was a couple of years late. You guys have seen my valuation model. You'll know it's been in there since day one when I published this thing initially in 2021. It's now 2024. But it's interesting to see the divergence in opinions now. I just, I still can't believe people with very large brains, much larger than mine, which is why I don't even understand dumping Tesla stock at these points, presumably to buy back when it's even cheaper, might work out, but I'm not smart enough for that. I'm just looking super long term and I think Tom might be as well. At post nine, not going your way today. Tom, why do you feel like things are going to turn for this company? Yeah, I mean, look, this company is in between two waves is what Elon calls it, right? You had the Model 3 and the Model Y, which is largely saturated. The next big catalyst is going to be the affordable car. Unfortunately, that comes in, what, H225. So he doesn't think about things on a day-to-day or month-to-month period, as you probably know very well. He's looking at things from a year's, if not decade's perspective. So we're just in between this period of two lulls. Eventually, we'll get this catalyst with this vehicle that'll come out. And there's some long-term tectonic things that people just aren't talking about. Did he just say tectonic? Man, I was not expecting geological timescales to be referenced, but here we are. And Tom's got a point here. We are definitely between two growth waves and a lot of people panicking. But again, I must ask the question. Generally speaking, which of the following strategies for most people would make more sense? Assuming that you do believe, like Tom, that Tesla have a very, very positive long-term future. Spoiler alert, that is what I believe. And if that's true, yet the stock is getting absolutely hammered right now, close to its one-year low, down enormously from its all-time high closing price a couple of years ago of over $400 a share, would it make more sense to be selling the stock between waves, presumably planning to buy back in later and ride that wave up, or to continue holding and or buying? Now, the reason I ask this is because the future is uncertain in terms of what the stock will do over the short, medium, or long term. But I'm pretty confident, long term, the trend is up. And as we've seen historically, there can be points in time where Tesla stock surges 10, 15, 20, 20 plus percent in a single day. There have been weeks with outrageous increases in Tesla's history. And I mean outrageous. Let's just look at the five-year chart for some examples. Imagine like a genius. You had sold Tesla stock at $60 a share because you thought, oh no, it's going to be down a little bit. I'll buy back later. And sure enough, your brain is massive. Look at that. You're a genius. In fact, so smart. You should probably post about this on X and tell everybody how smart you are. Look at me. I sold Tesla stock. At the top, it's down 50%. Everyone can eat my shit. I'm so smart. But you expect it to be down 75% and that's when you plan on buying back. But unfortunately for you, that's as low as it gets and suddenly it rebounds. But oh, it's going to come back down. Don't worry. It'll just, it's very volatile. It'll, it'll come back down. And at some point, suddenly, Tesla's now past the price you sold at. Don't forget your capital gains tax applicable to most people watching. And then out of absolutely nowhere, and I do mean out of absolutely nowhere, from that point where Tesla's now at your previous purchase price or sell price, <laughs> might be a little bit sleep deprived from the Starship launch last night, the stock rockets up 65% in less than a month. Actually, by the way, on screen now, you can see, right? From the 12th of June, 2020, the 10th of July 2020, the stock surged 65%. Now imagine you'd been the genius, you sold it at the top and thought you were actually a genius. I mean, look, stock down 52%. My brain's so big, I should tell everybody about it. But next minute, stock's 71% higher than the point you sold at. And if you'd been watching and waiting, oh, well, it'll come back down and suddenly, I mean, look at this, the 26th of June to the 10th of July, that's about two weeks, bro, 60.96%. Now what do you do? Oh, it'll come back to reality, right? Next minute, up 130% in two months. I mean, this stuff's outrageous. And again, from the 7th of August, 2020 till the 28th of August, the stock surged 52% in a few weeks. And again, from the genius selling point until that point, up about 150%. Comes back a little bit. Oh, see, it's finally collapsing. Everything's fine. Next minute, it happens again. From the 13th of November, 2020 until 8th of January, 2021, just a couple of months, the stock up over 100%. There's so many examples of this. Again, spread it out from late May 2021 until November 2021, the stock more than doubled. But from 8th of October 2021 until the 5th of November, less than a month, the stock's up 55%. And I could keep doing this. Look at these surges, up over 35% in less than a month here, up about 25% in two weeks here. 
up 84 percent from the 6th of january 2023 to the 17th of february 2023 up 84 percent bro 12th of may 23 to 16th of june 23 up 55 percent given that historically we have countless examples of tesla surging 50 plus percent 100 plus percent in a matter of days weeks or at most a couple of months if you're somebody of the opinion that Tesla is between two growth waves. The future looks very bright, and historically, it can do these things. Which of the following strategies, the ones I mentioned earlier, make a lot of sense? Trying to time the market, trade in and out, sell at multi-year lows, but expecting to buy back even lower soon after you've paid a couple of gains, you need to get a much better deal, factoring that in. Personally, I think the strategy of trading in and out of the stock is best reserved for people who have an IQ of about 180, or at least think they do. Like I said, I'm nowhere near smart enough for that. Tesla's market cap today, by the way, $509 billion. And for the record, I did buy more stock, literally overnight. Happened to have some more cash. And obviously, you know where it all goes, straight into Tesla. $162.50. In my opinion, quite the bargain. Oh, hey, it's me, editing Stephen. And well, a thought just occurred to me. Traders fold, investors hold. So uh, give me a moment. A few moments later... <laughs> New merch available now. Check the link to the pinned comment or the description to pick up your own Traders Fold, Investors Hold merch. There's shirts. If you guys scroll down, you can also see other variations on that design. There's hoodies, mugs, long sleeves, sweatshirts. You name it, it's available. Definitely a great conversation starter. Just don't wear this around any of your money managing friends. And as is the case with all the merch, 100% of the proceeds will go directly towards me buying while Tesla stonk. Just being honest. Get them while they're fresh. And for real... Really, these things are a great conversation starters. I wear a lot of my merch designs out and about, and you'll be surprised how many people will spark up a conversation because of something they've read on a shirt. I want to talk to a bunch of geeks about investing. This is the merch for you. So again, check the links in the pinned comment. Back to Tom. Folks like me will start writing reports about and get folks interested eventually. So, such as? Energy storage. Nobody's talking about this. Uh, this is a trillions of dollars of opportunity. Problem is it's like decades away, potentially. These guys have 15% market share in this business, um, and the profitability is higher than the profitability of cars. Uh, and then, of course, autonomy, right? There's just a lot of negativity in autonomy today. If you guys ever used FSD, I think it's a pretty amazing product. I think it's the most amazing product I've used since the iPhone. We're, we're finally going to get this version 12 this year, which could get the attach rate up. The problem is not even enough people have tested this thing. Once you have people test it and the pricing needs to come down, that can change things dramatically. People look at it as a software stock, not just an auto company. Right, you can sit here and talk. I think Tom makes some good points there. There aren't too many Tesla skeptics who've tried FSD, at least the latest builds, or at the very least watched a few hours of videos, unedited video of this software operating. I mean, it's mind-blowing stuff. And you have to have a brain the size of a peanut not to be able to join the dots and go, well, if it can do this in these situations already, it's going to be better in the future, and eventually it's going to be better than a human. And at that point, hello, the robotaxis, hello, the money, the trillions of dollars, people totally ignoring energy, and it does have insane margins, and it is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. I mean, that's pretty big. Not like your girlfriend big, but I mean, still pretty large. By the way, autonomy itself, a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. So energy, trillions. Autonomy, trillions. But of course, definitely a great idea to be dumping Tesla stock right now, if your brain's really large and you have a crystal ball. Neither of which are true in my case. Talk about what's on the come, but 25 is a long way away to wait for this new cheaper model. And so I do wonder what happens in the intervening years at this point to at least keep the stock where it is, if not battle those who say EV sales growth is slowing down, used car prices for Teslas, for example, are a key indicator that this is not going the way they want it to. Yeah, you're right. Things could get worse before they get better. There's no doubt about it. My job is to say where this stock will be a year from now, not next week. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what an absolute fucking monster. Tom, I love this. <laughs> he literally just laughed at what he was saying, which, by the way, I totally get it. I think he may have just low-key roasted CNBS having a micro-penis-length time horizon on all the commentary. I've got to listen to that again. It's just so delicious. Tom, you legend. Yeah, you're right. Things could get worse before they get better. There's no doubt about it. My job is to say where this stock will be a year from now, not next week. So, yeah, you're right. And the other issue is, while I think they'll hit the volume target that the sell side has, I don't think it's that aggressive, actually, for 24. I think that'll come from price cutting, which impacts profitability, and that's what everybody worries about. So, you're right. Near term, definitely challenging. Elon says it all the time, right? But again, you got to have a broader view of it. And 
I don't know about you. I can never time this thing. Right? <laughs> so it did. Did Tom just admit that he also does not have a gigantic brain and therefore doesn't even try to time Tesla stock? And again, we just had a history lesson of what Tesla can do in very short periods of time. As I've discussed, I really do think that trading in and out of Tesla stock should be reserved for people who truly do have a colossal brain or at least delude themselves into thinking so. Playing with fire is not a game that I'd be signing up for. It pops when it pops, right? Somebody like me writes a big report and everybody gets excited and that's the narrative that changes things. Mm -hmm. Near term though, I just don't know what the near term catalyst is from a data point perspective that re-rates the stock. What's your, what percentage of your valuation model is the core auto business? 10%. 10%? Yes. And the rest is energy? Autonomy and energy. AI, mostly autonomy. Mostly autonomy. Hmm. Yeah. And what about AI robotics? Or I, don't, I don't include robotics in there at all. Because, right. th this, because of the risk you might do it elsewhere or, or something we else? We just don't have any evidence of a product that's out there in the market making money. Energy storage is already making a bunch of money for them. And autonomy, they do have an FSD product, which is really compelling. And they're charging 200 bucks a month for this product. How about, about China risk? If, in fact, things really, I mean, TikTok's just one example of tariffs. What may happen a year or two from now? Yeah, no, no doubt. It's definitely a risk right now. We saw the Q1 numbers. I think those have to come down on deliveries. A lot of that is China New Year. But look, structurally, it's 40% of their volumes. But at the end of the day, their product that they sell, they do have better profitability than any other car company, maybe besides BYD, right? They should do well long term. And again, auto business, 10% of my valuation, right? It's really an autonomy business and an energy storage business. So this gives me a bit of a question I'd like to ask. Looking back to 2010, did it turn out that Tesla at IPO, as in Tesla stock, was a good long-term buy and hold, like pretty good value? Split adjusted, the stock IPO'd for $1.28. Was that a good deal? Up over 12,000% since. That's a solid return in my opinion. 14 years, that's it. It's gone from 128 to 162. And why did this occur? Well, predominantly... Tesla managed to carve out, in fact, pioneer and then carve out a gigantic slice of an enormous opportunity, electric vehicles. But it did take time for that to play out and for the stonk market to recognize this. And now we hear from Tom that Tesla's really, what did he say, an energy and AI company? If Tom's right, I wonder what happens over the next 14 years and whether or not this would be a bit of a case of deja vu. If it's true that Tesla ultimately ends up taking a solid slice of the energy storage business and the robo-taxi business and even has some success with a humanoid robot, but most investors are ignoring the possibility and doubting they'll be successful, could a half trillion dollar market cap, literally $509 billion today, look like the same joke that a $1.28 for Tesla stock did back in 2010 relative to where it is today? Just asking the question. Want more content? Early access? bunch of perks click the links in the pinned comment ag1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy allowing me to do a lot more every day including using my brain more and using my body more i highly recommend you guys and girls check it out it's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps it's got 75 high quality vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress plus if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com smr you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin d3 and k2 but don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 
100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point and something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work... Get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.